Privet, Stratica, and welcome. My name is Alex, and this is Red Alert 3 from Electronic Arts. And the reason I say it's from Electronic Arts is because that's the topic I'm going to be diving into. I really want to talk about EA and how EA is not the same type of video game company we think of other companies, such as your Ubisofts, your Blizzard, Activisions, your Paradox, your Segas. EA is its own kettle of fish. And of course, one thing that is very descriptive of EA is recently the huge PR blunders. <laughs> Surprise mechanics! It's all here. Oh my god, this company is just unbelievable. But the reason they're unbelievable is that they have tied their entire business model, which is incredibly profitable, on two main pillars and they're not very stable interestingly enough and those pillars could quickly fall down if ea is not careful one in particular those two pillars being license capture from madden nfl fifa soccer or football to the rest of the world and star wars the other pillar being of course microtransactions a business model that ea finds themselves vigorously defending with loot crates and everything because that is according to their financial statements the vast majority of their profit comes from those microtransactions that says a lot right there so as you know, if you've been following the channel since last year, I did a video on the announcement of Command & Conquer Rivals. New construction options. The disappointment that just came out of seeing a Command & Conquer game being reduced to essentially a Clash Royale game on a mobile was palpable, and for good reason. Building. This is not the game we expected. Command & Conquer Rivals, not, not this game, of course, this is Red Alert 3. But Command & Conquer Rivals was a gigantic just kick to them. You know where, because EA is so wedded to this microtransaction strategy that they're going to shoot horn into it everywhere. And of course, mobile is the biggest market for microtransactions. And we're going to continue to see this from EA until things truly change. But the thing is, is like it's so hugely profitable for EA to pursue microtransactions and to milk these three major licenses that they paid a lot of money for, FIFA, NFL, and Star Wars, that they can't uh, change their business uh, tactics, no matter how deplorable they may be. The microtransaction one may vary quickly change because it could quickly be legislated out so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting in the fact that EA may have just killed their own golden goose by pushing transactions so strongly and so unethically for such a long time that you know they could they could easily lose that. Uh, these terror drones are starting to... Yeah, those terror drones are something else. But anyways, so EA is kind of trapped from their their own uh, their own making. Interestingly enough. It's unfortunate because EA has done some quite a lot of good in uh, accessibility for games, making games playable for people with disabilities. And that's wonderful work. And yet it gets overshadowed by the enormous PR blunders that they've had uh, over the last couple of years. But those PR blunders come from those two pillars, namely their license capture and their heavil, heavily pushing microtransactions onto everybody and everything. Of course, we're going to Clash Royale everything as well, so <laughs> hey, it's, it's all good. Enemy units detected. 
let's see, we need a uh, facility. Make sure we need a power plant first. Whoop. Yeah, these guys could be dead. Yep, can't send infantry out alone anymore like that. It's been forever since I played this game, so don't be surprised if I got my butt handed to me. So when it comes to FIFA, NFL, Madden, and things like that, I kind of don't blame the uh, the players because where else are they going to go to to play NFL games, to play FIFA? To, for the rest of us, where else we're going to go to uh, play Star Wars? Nowhere. Actually, I may have to quit this game. I think I'm I'm already dead on this one. I said you didn't come to this channel for great gameplay, folks. I'm just telling you. At least, particularly with Commander Conquer Red Alert, I took out both of my harvesters. So, anyways, back to the main point, though. Where else are you going to go? You can't. So, what do we do about it? Well, not much we can do about it, unfortunately. Other than Vote with your wallet. Now, for a lot of us, we're probably not sports games fanatics. I, I used to play sports games quite a bit when I was growing up as a teenager with my friends. But when the endless cycle of Madden games, as well as NBA, as well as NHL and everything else, came around and became a player that were just milking this machine, uh, we kind of stopped playing and we kind of moved on to, actually this one here, real-time strategy. Or uh, RPGs or MMORPGs a little bit later on which I really enjoyed. And uh, we left sports games behind. Last sports game that I, play I played was uh, NFL 2K on the Sega Dreamcast. That was a while ago. That was back in 2000. So what do we do now? Well, like I said, uh, we move on and we vote with our wallets. The microtransaction thing, I think that is going to be a dead business model here very soon. Not dead because it's not profitable, but dead because it's going to be legislated out of existence. It's gotten the attention of governments. It's been clearly determined that it's very predatory. And I think either one of two things are going to happen. Either it's going to be legislated out or they're going to say, okay, you can do this. You can have your loot crates. You can have your randomized mechanics, but your surprise mechanics. If you do, your game's going to be rated as an adult game, and that's it, period. And that will pretty much be doing the same thing, essentially. So, if things become unprofitable for the licensee holders, your NFL, your FIFA, your Star Wars, then those organizations may be willing to spread the license out a little bit. But that's not going to happen while they get hugely profitable from uh, having EA do, uh, do the video games. And EA is not going to change, of course, because they are also hugely profitable in some of those games. Why? Because we keep buying them. And so I know a lot of us may not be sports gamers, and I don't really kind of blame the sports gamers. But for a lot of the FIFA and the Madden and the microtransactions, at some point they'll have to recognize and step to the plate and say, you know what, no more. No more. We're going to vote with our wallets and say, that is it. That's it. We're done. For the rest of us who are not sports gamers, it's going to come down to the Star Wars games. And that is being milked <laughs> to death as well. Training. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how things move forward. But again, as I mentioned before, I don't view EA as a traditional video game company. It is a game with license capture. It is a game with very unethical business practices when it comes to microtransactions. EA has an enormous library of intellectual property from a lot of the acquisitions they had. Companies such as Origin Studios was one of my personal favorites with Wing Commander, with um, Ultima Online, with Strike Commander, with a whole bunch of others. Wonderful studio that has just, you know, that's disappeared. Same with Westwood Studios, who made uh, Command and Conquer here. Same with uh, Bullfrog, who did uh, Syndicate. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But are we ever going to see those licenses again? Building. Yeah, if they're microtransactions and they're mobile, or they, uh, they're they under some sort of license that, they can, that EA can capture. 
in many ways, I almost don't even want to see my old games come back because I'll just see them essentially shoehorned into these type of type of business models that don't even reflect the games. As we saw with CNC Rivals, you know, it, it is what it is. And it's extremely unfortunate. Alright. So anyways, that's my take on EA. It's a company that you have to view differently than any other video game company. And whenever they make an announcement, I'm always nervous. There's a reason why people don't like EA. That's why they've been voted as one of the worst places to work. And that is not going to change. And after their colossal blunder with their surprise mechanics in front of the legislature, oh boy, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. But I think at least losing the microtransactions, though, will force EA to change their business model. There we go. On point. You know, losing those microtransactions is going to change EA's at least strategy as far as their business goes. They'll still capture the license as much as they can, but maybe they'll actually have to bring out their old IPs or make new IPs in the way that they were brought out originally. But as long as those microtransactions are around, it's it's not going to be good times. All right. Anyways, that's my video for today, folks. I hope you enjoy. I know, like, I was kind of like in and out because I'm trying to play the game at the same time I'm speaking, which is not easy. I actually need to develop a method of just recording gameplay footage and just speaking over it, so I'm not get distracted uh, as I'm making my point, and I can just have the gameplay in the background. But for right now, I'm kind of doing both. So again, I apologize for that, but I still think it's an important point, though, with regards to EA because. EA is so large, they do determine the course of the industry in many ways. And what happens with the EA is something I think we should all pay attention with. Anyways, I'm going to leave it here, guys. Take care, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.